All right, so I know we said that we were going to move on to recording some audio in this video, but before we do that, I wanted to explain the differences, or rather the differences and similarities between Logic Pro's low latency monitoring mode and Studio One's native low latency monitoring mode, or as I call it, Green Z. Let's get started. So if you're not familiar with this, I'm sure you are if you're watching this video, but in Logic Pro, you have the ability to enable a low latency monitoring mode, which helps you when you're recording. The way that this works, pretty simple. I'm gonna open up the preferences. If we head to the audio tab and we go to the general tab over here, notice we have the option to enable a low latency monitoring mode. This is also available in the record menu. And if you have this added in your menu, you would also see it over here. Kind of looks like a, like a, a gauge in a car or something like that. All right. So what this means is that basically we have the ability to set a maximum amount of latency that's acceptable to be in the low latency monitoring path. Also Logic does some clever routing where it will route any track that you have directly to the main outs and merge it with everything else. So to see this in practice, if I hover my cursor over this plugin over here, notice we have 3.1 milliseconds of latency that's being introduced by the Oxford limiter. If I put this into record mode, we're going to hear a substantial delay that's happening between my direct mic and whatever I'm hearing through the software monitoring. Now, watch what happens when I enable low latency monitoring over here. So to start off with, it's not doing anything because this is a default limit to five milliseconds. But it, as I start to drop this down, it is going to basically bypass this plugin from the monitoring path. Let me go over here. Okay, so we went to two milliseconds. And two milliseconds is less than the amount of latency that's incurred with this plugin. So now, basically with this setting, that means that anytime I monitor or record enable this track, this limiter is going to get disabled. Okay, if I increase this, I can change that limit. Now this will come back into the monitoring path. All right, so that's how everything works in Logic. Now one quick thing before we move over, let's open up the preferences and we're gonna to go to devices. In Logic, you basically have two buffers. You have an IO buffer size, which is kind of like your recording buffer. And then you have a process buffer range, which in this case is set to medium. You have three different options, small, medium, or large. Depending on your needs and what the CPU usage is per song, you may need to change this, or for most cases, probably leaving it at medium is okay. Let's hop over to Studio One now and take a look because things are actually very similar with a couple key differences. Okay, first things first, I'm just going to remove this track and let's actually pull up a new track that we can use for this. Give ourselves a nice bright color and make sure my input is set to the proper one, which it is. I'm going to open up the preferences in Studio One and we basically have two tabs. So we have the audio device, which allows us to choose the device or the interface that we're going to be using. Um, within here, I can set the device block size. Let's think of this as the input or the recording buffer that we have. The idea with Studio One is you wanna get this as low as possible. And then we actually have another tab, which is available over here. But before we do that, let's take a look at the input and the output latency over here. Very similar to what Logic reported. We have output latency of one millisecond, input latency of 8.83. That gives us a total of 88 samples of latency for this. Now, if we hop over to the processing tab, this is very similar to setting the process uh, buffer range in Logic. So we have a couple different more uh, options. Logic has basically small, medium, and large. Within Studio One, we have minimum, which is resulting in a block size of around 64 samples. Low is gonna be around 128. Medium, and then we have high, and then we have maximum. Now, I usually leave this on medium, and even on my older MacBook Pro, which was a 2015 Retina model, this usually worked out okay for me. But I want to point out a couple things. First of all, notice that we have this check mark over here. This is also available for virtual instruments. So in Logic, where they're kind of grouped together, in Studio One, these are seen or treated slightly different. So by default, we can just enable both of these. And when we see this green Z, this is gonna indicate the round trip latency path of all of everything going through this interface for both the audio tracks and the instrument tracks. I know what you might be thinking. Okay, well, if this is 1.8 milliseconds of round trip latency, which is 88 samples, why is it that when I go over to the processing tab, 
and I look at the low latency figure that it's a little bit more. The great thing about the way that Studio One's native low latency engine works in terms of how they're giving you the lowest latency monitoring path is it actually adds on top of what you get when you're setting your device block size or your record buffer at 32 samples, which is giving us that 1.83, it actually adds just a tiny little bit of a buffer on top of that, which helps in terms of stability and performance. Now, what this means is that with Studio One, you can track in a fairly heavy session with respect to CPU percentage. You can drop in and do punch-ins towards the end. And providing you don't do anything too crazy, I've been able to do uh, punch-ins or rather record a vocal track in a session where I have very high CPU usage. And because of the way their system works and the way these buffers work, you can get really great performance. Okay, now, just to kind of go over the math on this, for anybody who's as nerdy as I am, if I open up my music math calculator right over here, this is a great app, and by the way, if you don't have it, you should definitely check this out. I can basically give myself my sample rate, and then I can enter a length in sample, so this would be 88. If I click enter, notice this is 1.83. So this is the latency that we're getting. Now, we have, in terms of the low latency path, this is reporting 2.5. So if we take this 1.8 milliseconds, 1.83, which is 88 samples, and we add 32 to that, this gives us 120 samples. So if we do that, notice we arrive at this 2.5 milliseconds of round trip latency. So basically what's happening is Studio One is adding this input buffer in addition to what we already have, what's being reported for the interface. And this is where you get that stability, is just a little bit of extra breathing room, which just happens to work out great. Now, in terms of activating this, it is super simple. Notice over here on my main outs, any output that's using the native low latency path, all you have to do is just click the Z. That is literally it. So if we take a similar example, in this case, I'm gonna make sure that I'm in tape style, which is using an auto input monitoring workflow. If I now record arm this track, notice that we hear some latency. I click this Z, it pretty much takes it away. This brings me right down to that 2.5 milliseconds of round trip latency. So let's use the same plugin that we used before. So I'm gonna go and I'm going to add my Oxford limiter. Where is it? It's right over here. Okay, now notice that nothing really changed. It's still the exact same figure. So I'm going to just click Right under here, the performance monitor, if you single click this, this will open up your performance monitor and then we can show devices. Now, if I expand this out, this is reporting the exact same thing as we had being reported in Logic, which is 3.1 milliseconds of latency that this plugin is adding. Okay, so why isn't this in the path? Well, Studio One's low latency monitoring path or its allowance or tolerance, if you will, is hard limited to anything that's giving you basically three milliseconds or less. So that is the total amount that they allow to be within the path. So now, if I take another plugin, let's deactivate this for a moment. And actually, you know what? I'm going to take this just right out. We don't need it here at all. Well, we will remove this. I'm gonna pull up another plugin, which is Autotune Pro. Now, Autotune by itself, comes in at around 54, 55.4 milliseconds of latency that this plugin is adding. But on the native version of Autotune, not the UAD or not any DSP versions, in the settings, they have a low latency mode. And when you use the low latency mode, this brings this down to a 2.1 milliseconds as opposed to 55, at the cost, of course, of a little bit more CPU usage. So now, let us now record arm this track, and notice now, you see that we have the same Autotune plugin, but notice that the minute I record enabled it, we have the power indicator over here. It changed color, it changed to green. Also, we can see that this is 2.1 milliseconds. So like I said, this is under the hard limit of three milliseconds That's in that Studio One allows to live in the native low latency monitoring path. And also notice one more thing is that it created essentially another plugin version. So it's kind of cloned this version. What this means is that you have two plugin versions. One of them, because I'm in input monitoring mode, can always access anything that's already recorded on this track. So if I was to just drop in and record something right now, I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. We'll expand this out. Right now I'm monitoring 
through the one that is on the actual monitor effects. And this is, like I said, 2.1 milliseconds of round trip latency. I'm going to press stop, and now I'm going to play. I was to just drop in and record something right now. I'm just going to pull this out you a little bit. see what's happening? We'll expand this out. The minute I pressed play, because of the auto input monitoring workflow, it basically killed the monitor effects version, and it was using another one in the background. It's also doing some CPU allocation in terms of managing the threads and allocating resources just for this one specific track. Like I said, the way that this system is designed, it's similar to Logic in that it will merge whatever my record armed track is with my main outs. The main difference here, hold on, let me kill this auto-tune. This is driving me a little bit crazy. The main difference here though, being that we can have a session that's pretty high in CPU usage where basically, Anytime we need to drop in and do either punch-ins or do some overdubs, I've been able to do this when I have a session that's really taxing my CPU. And the end result is that you have something that's actually incredibly stable and allows you to work almost like you're working in a DSP-based system. That is native low latency monitoring in Studio One. Very similar to Logic but a little bit different in the implementation. We have the hard limit of the three millisecond allowance in terms of what's allowed within that low latency monitoring path, but super easy to activate and deactivate as needed. We just have to click the Z icon or the Z icon, depending on where you're from, and that's it. You click that, it is automatically enabled. And the beauty of this is that basically, you can have your system live in a state where maybe you always have your dropout protection, which is like your playback buffer set to high, and you always have your record buffer set to 32 samples. And really, regardless of my session size or how many plugins that I start stacking up or what my CPU usage is, even if I get up to 30, 40, 50, 55, 60% in terms of my CPU usage on playback, I can still record a basic track if I need to do some overdubs at the end of a production or in the middle of a production, I don't have to worry about rendering out a stereo print, basically starting a new song just to record some vocals. It's a really beautiful system. It's really elegantly designed. And from my experience, especially with the Quantum, it works amazing. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we are going to get into recording. We're going to talk about different record modes, all sorts of stuff. So I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.